Let us look at the basics of wired communications. What's a channel? Channel is a connection between the transmitter and receiver. There are two types, wired and wireless channels. What's a wired channel? Give some examples. A wired channel deploys line or wire transmission. Examples could be telephones use copper wires between transmitting end and receiving end. Other forms of wired transmissions are twisted pair, Ethernet lands, coaxial in cable TV, fiber optics in very high speed broadband networks for voice, internet, video and data. These are some of the examples of wired channel. What's a wireless channel? Can you give some examples? Wireless channel deploys wireless or radio communication. Examples AM music, FM music, TV broadcast in the entertainment sector, GSM and CDMA communications in mobile technology which we are all familiar with, Bluetooth, WiMAX, Wi-Fi, these are some of the broadband LAN WAN wireless applications. Next question, what is a popular frequency band in which majority of these things happen? The answer is only indicative and by no means accurate. Important frequency bands are from 500 kilohertz to 2.4 gigahertz. As we said earlier, this is a very approximate answer. What are the challenges in wired communications? Signal distortion, signal attenuation, interference from noise, crosstalk, these are some of the challenges in wired communications. What do we mean by signal attenuation and why? Signal attenuation, as a signal propagates in the channel, the signal reduces in its power and attenuates. This is due to the resistance of the channel, the spreading of the signal in a spherical wave front and also fading. Let us look at how signal attenuation behaves in a fixed wireless system and a mobile wireless system. In a fixed wireless scenario, communication is between a fixer transmitter in a fixed location and a receiver which is also in a fixed location. Neither of them is mobile. The propagation is known as free space propagation. The signal attenuation in this scenario is 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per active. If D is the distance between the transmitter and receiver, the attenuation is proportional to 1 by D square. The signal attenuates at the rate of 20 dB, that is 100 times reduction in power, when the distance increases just 10 times. For example, if a receiver 1 kilometer away from a transmitter receives a power of 1 watt, another receiver located 10 kilometers away would receive a power which is just 1 by 100th of a watt or 10 milliwatts. How does signal attenuation behave in a mobile wireless system? In a mobile wireless scenario, the communication is between a transmitter and a fixed location and a receiver which can be moving around. Examples, GSM, CDMA, mobile handsets, etc. The propagation is known as mobile propagation. The signal attenuation in this scenario is 40 dB per decade or 12 dB per octave. What is decade? 1, 10, 100, 1000, these are decadic. What is octave? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, this is called octave. If D is the distance between transmitter and receiver, the attenuation in a mobile wireless scenario is proportional to 1 by D power 4. In free space, it is 1 by D square. In a mobile environment, it is 1 by D power 4. The signal attenuates at the rate of 40 dB, that is 10,000 times reduction in power, when the distance increases just 10 times. One example is, if a receiver one kilometer away from a transmitter receives a power of one watt, another receiver located ten kilometers away will receive one by ten thousandth of a watt, that is hundred microwatts. Compare this with a fixed wireless scenario, ten milliwatts against hundred microwatt. What is distortion? How many types are there? Why? Due to non-linear characteristics of the channel, the signal will undergo amplitude distortion and also phase distortion. Examples of amplitude distortion 
a lightning in the atmosphere will get superimposed on the signal and linearly add up producing amplitude distortion. Examples of phase distortion could be the channel may exhibit different attenuation characteristics for different frequencies of the signal. Lower frequency band of the signal may suffer less attenuation while the high frequency bands will suffer more attenuation. This inequality of the frequency behavior will result in what is known as phase distortions. What is group delay? Please find it out. What is the additive noise interference? How many types are there? Why? This type of noise is due to the internal elements of the equipment such as solid state devices, ICs, resistors and other components. Three major categories could be thermal noise, short noise and partition noise. Noise is any undesired signal that ultimately appears in the output of a communication system. Noise can be grouped into two categories, natural and man-made. What are different types of natural noise? Natural noise can again be broken down into two subcategories, atmospheric noise and cosmic noise. Atmospheric noise originates in our atmosphere. Lightning associated with thunderstorms creates R of noise over a wide range of frequencies, typically 100 kilohertz to even 20 megahertz. And this travels hundreds of miles. Auroral discharges in the polar regions also create noise at lower frequencies below 0.1 megahertz. On a worldwide scale, do you know that 8 million lightning flashes occur daily? Wow, that's hell of a lot, isn't it? This is about 100 lightning flashes per second. Cosmic noise. This comes from a source outside the Earth's atmosphere. The sun produces noise that reaches a maximum at 11 year intervals. The last maximum was early in 2001. The planet Jupiter produces copious amounts of R of noise in the 16 to 24 megahertz range. Other stars and galaxies also contribute to cosmic noise. What are the different types of man-made noise? Man-made or artificial noise can also be divided into two subcategories, external man-made noise and internal man-made noise. External man-made noise is produced by all kinds of electrical devices, examples, fluorescent lights, automotive ignition systems, electric motors, arc welding and so on. As a general rule, where there are sparks, there is noise. Any type of electrical discharge produces RF over a wide range of wavelengths. Internal man-made noise, this is produced by electronic components making up the communication system. Two important types of internal man-made noise could be thermal noise or Johnson noise. Second one, short noise. Thermal noise, this is created by motion of electrons, let's say in a resistor. Inside a resistor, the electrons agitate randomly and differently proportionate to the thermal energy they receive. This random fluctuating movement of electrons produces a noise voltage at the terminals of the resistor. Thermal noise is also known as white noise. Random distribution of amplitude levels and uniform frequency spectrum would be the definition for white noise. Next one, short noise. This is produced in active devices such as transistors. The flow of current in a transistor is not a smooth steady flow such as one encounters when pouring water from a pitcher into a glass. It's more similar to the flow one sees when pouring lead shot into a shell. The current flow is made of discrete current carriers, electrons and the number of electrons leaving the collector of a transistor is not consistent but varies slightly from moment to moment. In bipolar transistors, the short noise increases as the bias current is increased. In FETs, the short noise is affected by changes in the DC bias. Next one, what is intersymbol interference? I refer to the figure that appears on your screen. In a band limited digital transmission, the presence of outputs due to other previous bits interfere with the output of the present required bit. That is the previous bits or previous symbols interfere with the current bit or current symbol. This effect is called intersymbol interference. Why intersymbol interference happens? This type of interference occurs in a digital transmission, especially in a band limited channel. Let us assume a system is communicating at 100 kilobits per second. 
the bandwidth allotted to this channel will usually not exceed 100 kilohertz. Why? This is because of the fact the bandwidth is a limited resource like water or petrol and a judicious conservation of bandwidth is very essential. The entire frequency spectrum from DC to gigahertz is in great demand as several applications compete for bandwidth. A single square pulse band limited by a filter will exhibit damped oscillations characteristics following what is known as a sin x by x curve which is quite popular. That is, each symbol will have its effect in the next few symbols. In other words, the symbol at any given instant will be significantly interfered with by the previous symbol, previous to previous symbol, previous to previous to previous symbol and so on. This is called intersymbol interference. Okay, so what happens? The present symbol will be interfered by the combined effect of all other previous symbols which constitutes a form of noise. The probability of errors in transmission increases as intersymbol interference increases.